Big thanks to Bluefin for sending this one out. Check them out and links to buy in the description. Dragon Ball Horror Kaiju and more. Steven's Toy Reviews. Hey, hello there collectors, it is Steven here and welcome to another Figure Arts Review. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Marvel one and it is going to be Doctor Strange Battle on Titan Edition. This is going to be from Avengers Infinity War. Some of you may know of a previous SHF Doctor Strange release, but this one is going to be a little bit updated with some better paint apps and a ton more accessories. And this review, I just know this is the first section that I'm recording, so I'm going to take a guess, is going to go on for a pretty long time. So let's cut to the chase and see whether or not Butterfree Ginger Snap is worth adding into your collection. The previous Doctor Strange that was released from Infinity War had some rather bright paint apps, whereas here, the Battle on Titan edition Doctor Strange has some darker paint apps, but that's not a bad thing. It actually comes off looking very nice. He's also going to be utilizing a cloth fabric cape instead of a plastic one, which is uh, very good. Bandai has come quite, uh, quite a long way from some of the older cloth capes that they've used. Looking at you, Figuarts Omegamon, but still, it is going to look very good, and compared to some of the other soft goods figures that I have, this one is looking great. Now, the dot matrix printing for the face, uh, it has improved over time, and we've gotten to a point where, realistically speaking, you can use this printing technique for pretty much anything. There are some other companies who use this for the actual paint apps on a figure, going so far as to use this for, let's say, blood splatters or bile splatters for some full-on paint applications for the body, and it does look good, and definitely speaking here, when it comes to really getting Bendy Noodle Cumberbatch's face here, yeah, it is very accurate, it looks very, very straight on to the actual actor here, so yes, two claps there, much better than the previously released figure, which I can only reference from stills that I've seen online, because I don't have that one, but this one, very happy to have. Now, he is also going to come with an alternate head sculpt, and we'll take a look at that in just a little bit. Taking a look at the rest of the figure, generally speaking for the paint apps, there really isn't going to be a whole lot bad to say. Unless you take a look at the hands, then you can sort of see some flash marks there, which if you have to have perfection on your figures, then unfortunately, this one is not going to be perfect. But then I would say there's no such thing as a perfect figure. Generally speaking, the paint apps are relatively clean. There are no issues with masking that I can see on this particular unit, though on one of the arms, there is a blue band of the brighter blue that does does have a little bit of a darker blue driplet on it, but other than that, it's fine. Taking a look also at the cape and the collar that come along with it, very good. There is gold paint that is utilized on the figure. Gold is pretty much universally difficult for any company to nail, and here it looks just fine. So the soft goods cape looks great, and the rest of the figure looks good as well. Doctor Strange's engineering here is actually pretty good. And points of articulation, figure arts classics here. And uh, despite the fact that we're not going to have some renewal or 2.0 style joints, he moves just fine. So the head, as you can see here, we do have a ball joint. And then the neck actually is going to plug in on a ball joint as well. So we get some good movement there for all your needs to move Stephen Strange's head around. He looks around just fine. Collar is going to get in the way a little bit. I would try not to do that often to avoid paint rubbing. But uh, yeah, you can look up, look down that far, side to side. It's all good. Now for the shoulders, we are going to have ball joints, which allow you to rotate, move forward and back. Uh, there may be a butterfly joint in there. It looks like it, but I can't see for sure to see what the connection and the system is in there. So I am going to effectively say that if you're familiar with um, butterfly joints and ball joints, it's going to be the same thing. He has hinges, so he can raise and lower his arms just like that, which are very good. Now for bicep swivel, it is going to be closer up here to the shoulder. So this way, that's where they move. Very good movement there. We are going to have single hinge elbows but pretty good movement, about 90 degrees or so, a little bit more than I would say. For the wrists, standard figure art style with swivels and hinges, and the hands are going to plug in more so on pegs, so they are going to be able to swivel around as well. Doctor Strange is going to feature one big ball joint connection, barbell style ball joint in the waist, so this way he can twist and turn from side to side, so combine that with the neck joints, he's going to be able to look up that far and bend over and look down like that. 
Now, his uh, waistcoat area here, it is made of a softer plastic, so that isn't really going to get in the way too much of leg movement, uh, except for when he goes to move his legs forward and back. So they're going to move forward and back about that far. To the side, you can really push it that far, or can you? He is going to be using the original 1.0 drop-down style hips, and when you do that, he gets more range of movement. And as you can see, because there are cuts here, they're going to move just fine. We are going to have single hinge knees, so they move like so. Very good. And now we get into what really makes this figure's engineering unique. Now, for the ankle joints, they are going to be ball joints, so this way you can move them, you can spin them around, get ankle rocker movement, all that fun stuff, right? Now, what's really cool here is that, um, well, they're a little bit different. So the way that it works is I had to actually heat his ankle joints up to see what was going on because they were kind of stuck, but... You know, when you kind of get a look at it, you get the idea of what's going on. There is a peg that plugs into his leg and then a peg that plugs into his foot. And then from there, there is a socket that is on one portion and then a ball that's in the other and it's connected. So normally on something like, let's say, Piccolo here, you would think that that's how it would be where there would be a peg that goes into a ball joint that goes into the foot. So this way we can move it around. That's not going to be the case here. Instead, right here, there's going to be a ball joint, and that is where everything moves. So there isn't a ball joint in the foot. It's actually a peg, and then the point of articulation is going to be at that connection point where the sculpt meets. So that's, that's rather interesting, and it's something also to keep in mind, so this way you're not applying force at the wrong spot at this area, so this way you don't accidentally break it because you don't want to do that. Anyway, we do have a toe hinge that moves, which is very good. And then just real quick, you can see the movement there for the foot a little better. Something that I don't really think that I clarified too well is that with the 1.0 style, we do have thigh swivels, which is nice. And there you go. Now let's talk about the cape. This is pretty cool. Where it attaches in on the back, we are gonna have a hinge. So this way we can have the cape more so flowing like that and we can push it down as well, so this way we can have it resting. Now, there is going to be a bendy wire that goes all the way down at the brim and back up, so this way we can put it in all sorts of fun poses, and then we can put it back up. We can sort of have Doctor Strange doing one of these. Very cool. And as you'll see in some of the pictures, promo pictures and the ones that I take, uh, the articulation works well enough. So this way, if you want him to cross his legs or cast a spell, you can do that. So Doctor Strange is going to be using some 1.0 body style points of articulation and some single hinges when they could have used double hinges. But realistically speaking, yeah, he moves just fine. I really do like the way that they engineered this guy. Pretty creative. <sighs> Okay, so accessories. <clears throat> right off of the instruction booklet, and we are going to just hit the ground running talking about this. So we are going to have the interchangeable head part. We are going to have a total of 14 interchangeable hands. We're going to have one crimson band effect part. We're going to have a sword. We're going to have magical circle effect parts. One is going to be a small. We're going to get two medium, and then we're going to get one large boy. We're going to get magic effect part orange, small, two. Magic effect part orange, large, two. Time stone effect parts small, green, times two. Also large, times two. Those are going to be the little wristband effects that you're seeing over to your left-hand side of the screen. We are going to get time stone effect part for the green explosion on the chest there. We are going to get stands for the large magical circle effect parts and operation manual, this paper. Oh, that's not an accessory. Okay, so now that we've read everything, let's take a look at everything kind of short, sweet, and to the point. So this way we can keep on keeping on and get to the end of the review because I can go on forever talking about how cool these accessories are. So first and foremost, we have the total of 14 hands. We're going to get a whole bunch of them, whether it's going to be Doctor Strange doing his different signs things so this way he can conjure up spells or he's going to come with splayed hand parts that have pegs in them. So this way you can use the different magical circle parts. Sounds like he's using a Yu-Gi-Oh card, but it is what it is. It is. Now, Doctor Strange is also going to come with that alternate head part where he's going to be closing his eyes like he's conjuring a spell, utilizing the Time Stone, which we'll take a look at those accessories in just a minute. The dot matrix paint application here as well looks great. There are no issues up close and personal. Looks fine. Super duper macro photography. Of course, you're going to see all the little dots from the printing. Yeah, Bandai's really stepped up their game over the years. 
Now, taking a look at the actual accessories that he's going to come with, more specifically the effect parts, Doctor Strange does come with a lot. So he is going to come with that crimson band effect part, which is going to be for the left hand where he's shooting out those little red tendrils, if you will. And there's inscription on it. Very cool for the size. And that is also going to be true for the sword as well. I don't specifically remember Doctor Strange using a sword. I've seen uh, Doctor Strange, Infinity War and Endgame. It, chances are that just got uh, blanked out from my memory here. But hey, you know what? One way or another, it was, it, it's a sword. Who doesn't like swords? So we are going to have those magical circle effect parts. Now we are going to get two orange ones and we are going to get one green one for the time stone. Now, with that being said, these can either slip between the wrist joint and the hand, or we do have the splayed hands with the peg. Something I will make note of the different circle effects do have that protective plastic, which they recommend to peel off. I would say not to just because, well, it's protective plastic on there and you can't really tell the difference, at least in my history with these sorts of effects. So I just keep them on just because it protects the effect part. Yeah, though, something to keep in mind, if you do rub this up against the hand part too much, you will get a little bit of paint transfer and all of the application on there does look very, very good, including when we get the large one, which there's no real inscription on there. It's just energy moving in a circle. So this way you can pretend characters are coming to and from and it's nice and clear through it. So you don't have to worry about it looking sort of fake in the center. It you can see straight through it. Very good. Now, taking a look at the different wrist parts that are going to come with Doctor Strange, these are going to be just easy enough like those magical circle parts. So this way you can use them with ease. All you're going to have to do is just pop the hands off, push the bigger ring up the forearm near to the elbow, and then the smaller ring goes closer to the wrists, pop the hand back on, and then you can use a whole bunch of different accessories and poses here, and you can have yourself a good time. Last but most certainly not least, we are going to have that breast effect part that gets swapped out for the Eye of Agamotto, or the Time Stone, whichever you would prefer, and that is going to be easy to pop off. It's very similar to the color timers if you do collect the Ultraman figure arts, and if you don't, well, then maybe you should think about one or two. Yep, Doctor Strange comes with a ton of different accessories, so this way you can display him in basically any, any pose you want with any effect part pretty much that he comes with. The only thing that I could think of is another head sculpt, so this way it looks like he's really engaging in the action. But otherwise, yeah, I, I think he fills out the price point just fine and dandy. And if you don't have the first version, then there's no reason to think about that. You could just go ahead and get this one because it comes with everything and more. The only other thing, a support stand. But those are pretty cheap and you can go ahead and get those on the aftermarket. Now let's go ahead and move right on over to a size comparison so you can see how big Doctor Strange is. And yeah, he's going to be your average SH figure art size. He's going to blend in well with some other companies who are doing superhero figures, so he should fit just fine enough on your shelf. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. All right, here we go. What's the final verdict? Yep, he is going to be a winner. Now, initially, the price tag may scare some folks away because, well, close to 90, yeah, that can be a bit much for some. But here's what I'll say. If you are looking to pick up a very, very nice Doctor Strange figure, maybe you've bought and sold some of them over the years, and you're kind of looking for the, I guess you may even say definitive figure, you're not really going to have to look much farther than this one. Good articulation. You can get them in plenty of fun poses plenty of accessories that basically overcome any flaws and the dot matrix printing for the face, which the head sculpt is even improved from the first Infinity War release. And this Doctor Strange basically has it all. Yeah, good. Yep. I think the price tag is going to be the only barrier for a reason why somebody may not pick this up. But if you do get it, if you do save your pennies, you're not going to be disappointed. 
Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now, you've heard a lot from me, I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So, to all of you, two big thumbs up. Thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up, which will give you a few clickable links, like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my Patreon, or some short URLs, like to my social media or to my Teespring store. There's also a video I hand selected for you, so if you want to watch another STR video, I hand selected some good content for you to watch, so definitely check out that video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.